It is time, ladies and gents. Time for us to figure out who killed Byakuya Togami. The blue hue of our vacation is now a crimson red. Is the killer really one of us? Or is it someone else? The class trial starts now. Well, <laughs> if it's one of us, or is it someone else? Wait a way, it is one of us 15 students. I mean, doesn't really make sense when you say it like that, but anyway. We shall uh, see about uh, who killed Byakuya Togami in our first class trial. Now, I have uh, checked the truth bullets a little bit in my spare time, and also we shall equip our skills that we got, the algorithm and uh, the vocabulary. Those are the only skills that I got so far. We can carry a maximum of skill, like... We can carry skill points as long as it... As long as the max skill point is 27. Which, honestly, I don't really have that many skills to begin with to occupy all 27 skill points. But, uh, either way. I also have uh, the mean difficulty on. I am a mean, mean, finding the killer machine. And I guess that's pretty much it. Alright, then. Let's begin, ladies and gents. Our first class trial in the second killing game. Now, Ben, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. Yep, I guess we'll show that. <laughs> Usabi. Alright, come on, Usabi. <laughs> okay. I guess we shall begin with our. Simple explanation of the class of trial given to us by Manakuma. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. Oh man, I'm so excited! <laughs> if you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. And that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh man, I'm so excited. S such a cruel rule. <sighs> Before we begin, I'd like to confirm one thing. Is there really a killer among us? Yes, there is, Nagito. Yes, there is. Most definitely. There's no doubt that the blackened is lurking among you. You have to accept the truth, Nagito. There really is a killer among us. Such a sad state of affairs, isn't it? By the way, this class trial is gonna be 100% fair, so there's no need to worry. I'm the type who hates favoritism and prejudice. Well, not as much as I hate Monami, of course. Oh! You hate me that much? Oh man. Now, let's begin! Man, is Usami gonna be the punching bag in this class trial too? Hmm. Start with the murder weapon. No complaining. Let's just settle this with our fists. How are we gonna be able to settle this with our fists? Were you even listening to the rules? Didn't that Biakia bastard get killed in the dining hall? Huh? Then everyone there is a fucking suspect. Not everyone just there, Fuyuhiko. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. What you're really trying to say is that you're not the killer, right? I think so, yeah. No shit. You guys went off on your own and started killing each other. This has nothing to do with me. Huh? What does that mean? Anyway, why don't we try talking about the most pressing issue on our minds? Huh. The most pressing issue on our minds? Where we found the body. It's very strange to find a body underneath the table. It is. Then, let's start with that mystery. The reason why Byakuya's body was discovered under the dining hall table. We can start with that, but ultimately we need to find out who murdered him. If we can't do that... No. Thinking about if is a waste of time. Hmm. We will definitely do this, Hajime. Like, baby steps. First things first, we're gonna have to answer how Byakuya's body got under the table like that we have to do this no matter what 
So the class trial has finally started. From this point on, I will provide a simple tutorials at every p important moment. I'm sorry, but it, please excuse my ear tainting rudeness. <laughs> okay. I guess uh, he's gonna tell us about the Israel stuff, non-stop debates and all that. As things progress through as things progress during each class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, all of your classmates will speak one after the other, without any breaks. It's up to you to reveal any lies or mistakes contained within their statements. This means you will have to use your true bullets to refute what they say. Alright, gotcha. Out of all the true bullets you find during your investigation, only the relevant ones will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the mouse to move the reticle, then fire with the left mouse button, yada yada yada, got it. Pay close attention to each character's statements and choose your true bullets to blast the right ones. Note that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. And by fail, we mean uh, we're gonna get like a game over. If you press the S key during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun! Alright! First now start the bait! Hi! Alright, what do we have here? We have three true bullets. Gaps in floorboard, knife, and blood stain under the table. Alright, didn't. Why was Biakuya's body in a place like that? His body was underneath the table at the very back of the dining hall. After the killer murdered Biakuya, they probably moved the body there. Mm. Huh? Why? Obviously, by hiding the body, they tried to delay its discovery. Like a dog burying a bone. <laughs> okay. What a very good comparison there, Yubuki, but why delay the discovery in the first place? We were gonna find the body either way, at some point. Well, yeah, I don't know about that one, guys. Hmm? What he just said was strange. He clearly contradicts the information I know. Yep, Why it totally does! In a place like that. It totally contradicts what, what I know for sure. Underneath the table, at the very back of the dining hall. After the killer murdered Byakuya, they probably moved the body there. Ah, there you go. Also have my focus. Counter! Also have my focus, once again. No, I don't think the killer moved the body. Huh? Why? Try to remember what the body looked like when we found it under the table. Though there was a lot of blood everywhere, there was no sign the killer actually dragged the body through. Mm, that's true. So that's why you think it's impossible that the killer moved the body. I see. I get your point. I mean, who would be able to move the body given how fat he was? Neko? Nah. <laughs> he had his own shit to deal with. The killer couldn't have moved the body. Cause there would have been a trail of blood stain. The blood stain was only under the table. It would have been a trail of blood. Oh, and here I thought I had a genius idea. Eh, no need to worry. It is a rookie mistake after all. Too bad you're so stupid and boring and unpopular. Your life is meaningless. Hey, hey, shut it, Hyoko. I respond better to praise, you know. But if the killer didn't move the body, why was it under the table? Mm, good question. I can only think of one option. Yakuya was probably killed under the table. What? You think he was killed under the table? So Byakuya snuck under the table for reasons unknown, and that's when he was killed. Mm-hmm. Then, shortly thereafter, we found his body under the table. Th that does make sense, but why did he go under the table? Obviously, he was hiding so he could surprise us. That dude was always a big jokester. Um, was he? I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, couldn't tell what kind of person he was. I mean, really, why, why a jokester? Hmm. Maybe he panicked during the blackout and dove under the table. Oh, <laughs> exactly my thoughts. <laughs> yep. Blackout, not an earthquake. 
Just because the power went out doesn't mean he'd dive under the table. I don't know. I'd like to imagine that Byakuya did that. I don't know. Why is probably connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, don't you think? The reason Byakuya dove under the table. If it's connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, then it's probably... Um... If it's connected to what Byakuya... Uh... The question is, why would Byakuya be under the table in the first place? Ah, we can also see the problem. If it's connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, then it's probably... Well, we, well, we know that uh, he was keeping an eye on all of us. Mm. Details? Okay, the victim was... Uh, I don't think I cared that much about that. Okay, we already seen that. I do have a feeling that Byakuya was trying to find out if there was somebody under the under the floorboard. That's the only thing that I can think of right now. Why in the world do we have uh, Mikan's embarrassing pose? As a truth for it, I don't understand that. I don't know. It will prove to be useful at some point, but ugh, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see about this one. Um, this may sound presumptuous, but I think that's wrong. Crap! One staring. Looks like I just made a fool of myself in front of everyone. Okay. If it's connected to what Biakwe was doing. Oh, okay, I see. He wanted to grab the knife? If he was attached there with green light for him to see, then that might be it. I can prove it with this. It probably has something to do with the knife we found under the table. So that would mean that Byakuya knew about the knife under the table. So that way he took it and tried to use it in case somebody was about to get attacked. That's why it had glowing paint, because glowing paint was probably in, also in the self-defense kit during the Dwell in the Dwellman case. But in that case, why didn't he have the knife in his case near him for him to grab easily? That's knife? Oh, you mean that thing that obviously screams, I am the murder weapon! <laughs> <laughs> Yakuya probably noticed the knife was hidden there, so in order to get it, he moved under the table. He was particularly sensitive to the presence of dangerous items, so I cannot deny that possibility. But how did he notice that there was a knife under the table? If he knew beforehand, he probably would have done something about it before the blackout, right? Mm -hmm. Then, instead of knowing about it beforehand... Maybe he saw it right at that moment. Like, for example, he might have seen someone trying to take the knife out from under the table. Huh? No, that's not possible. That's a very interesting possibility there, Chiaki. What? What did you just say there? Instead of knowing about it beforehand, maybe he saw it right at that moment. Like, for example, he might have seen someone trying to to take the knife out from under the table. Huh. <laughs> what? You seem rather confident about that. Yeah, she sure seems confident about that. Of course. I have proof to back me up. Oh, is that so, Pickle? <laughs> this is almost like a real trial! Yeah, I know, right? We're having fun times over here, Monokuma. During the previous statement, there was only one weak spot. But from this point on, there will be various weak spots standing in your way. Okay. 
so that will mean more things to shoot. For more things that we can shoot. No matter how many weak spots there are, there will be one, only one lie or contradiction in the debate at the time. This means there will be a false weak. There will be false weak spots. If you shoot a false weak spot with a true bullet, not only will you fail to refute what was said, but you also lower your trust with everyone, and your influence gauge will take damage. If your influence gauge reaches zero, you will fail. So please be extra careful. Okay, gotcha. You have to rely on your own lead logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or mistakes. Also, if you concentrate by holding down the space key, you can progress the argument slowly. Yep, just like in the first uh, killing game. Please use it whenever you feel like the statements are moving too fast for you to aim. Like, quote unquote, always. However, this does consume the focus gauge, gauge gouge, so please be careful. If you press the S key during the argument, you can la 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 la. Well then, good luck and have fun! Nice. Second debate! Alrighty then, let's see about this. Oh, hold on a second. I'm sure Byakuya ducked under the table during the blackout. That sounds correct. If that's the case, during the blackout, Mr. Ham Hands. <laughs> Mr. Ham Hands? I've seen the killer take the knife. But it was super pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my food. Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. I doubt he could have seen the killer. Mmm, I don't know about that one, Miss Peko Pekoyama. I don't know about that one. Was he unable to see in the dark? It's true, getting under the under that table during the blackout would have been nearly impossible, but... But, 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 but let's see. During the blackout. That sounds correct. If that's the case... During the blackout, Mr. Hamhams must have seen the killer take the knife. That is right. Pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my food. Byakuya couldn't see in the dark either. I don't think so. No, that's wrong. Judgment. So did what she go you. No, Byakuya was probably the only one who was able to see in the dark. Why do you say that? He was using those night vision goggles we found under the table. He could have seen what was happening. Exactly. So, are you saying Byakuya was the one who used those night vision goggles? Mm. Actually, uh, hmm. Yeah, that seems to be the case. Your reasoning is out of focus. What the hell? No, that's obviously wrong. It should be the other way around. Uh, my hero. Uh, wait. Are you thinking the way I'm thinking as well? What? Other way around? The other way around? Seriously, the killer used those night vision goggles, not Byakuya. Hmm. Uh, were you surprised by him by Mahiro's sudden argument? Yeah, very surprised. What the hell is that? Just between you and me. I was also surprised. Tell <laughs> what you didn't know, Mr. Tutorial Guy. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm ah, sorry. <laughs> now then, when this kind of a- also, I know that in the first killing game I, um, I uh, did Monokuma's voice for the Tutorial Guy, but I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna do the Monokuma voice today, just to uh, have my voice be recovered and all that, so I'm gonna use my normal voice for this. Now then, when this kind of argument surfaces, you will go into a one-on-one -on -one debate called Rebell Rebuttal Showdown. In this mode, you have to counter the other person's claim, draw out their weak spots, and argue against them. Wait, what? Uh... What do you say? When this kind of argument surfaces, you will go into... Okay... Rebuttal Showdown. In this mode, you have to counter the other person's claim, draw out their weak spots, and argue against them. Okay. Please counter the other person's remarks with WSD keys. 
Based on the shape of their remarks, it's important to know whether to cut vertically, sideways, or diagonally. And based on that, it can skew the debate's mood to your advantage. On the other hand, if you ignore the other person's remarks, it will skew toward their advantage. In the bottom right hand corner of your screen, a number that shows the sharpness of your counter is displayed. This is the number of times you can cut rem remarks during one round of the, de of the debate. You will also lose counts of sharpness even if you miss, so please be very careful. When a mood skews to your advantage for a certain length of time, the other party's argument changes. This means the conversation will develop. If that happens, they will end up divulging some weak spots. However, you cannot normally cut remarks that contain weak spots. Instead, it will skew the mood toward the other party's adventures. Plus, it's gonna be very... big. Okay? Just like a regular debate, please refute any weak spots within with the left mouse button. Of course, if you don't have the correct throughput, you will not be able to cut an opponent's remark. Oh, so... <laughs> Alright. That makes perfect sense, I guess. Huh? What's a truth blade? Wait, did I say true bullet? It's a truth blade! What? I'm terribly sorry, it appears there has been a delay in contacting you. I will make sure the poor person in charge of contacting you takes a very long vacation. To what? In this mode, true bullets will be called true blades. Um... That's about it. There won't be any other changes to your handbook menu. I see... No, nope, I'm confused. What? Only the name was changed, but don't you think a change in feeling is important? If you press the S key to... Okay... Well then, good luck and have fun! Um, I guess... I... Uh, uh, oh god... Well, he was right! They changed into blades! If you well... Just use common sense. The killer obviously used those knife um... Huh? This is interesting. Oh god! Uh, oh, success! Where's your proof that the killer used them? Because if they use night vision goggles, then they could have killed Byakuya even in the dark. Um. In reality, so those goggles were planned in advance. The killer brought them to the crime scene. What the hell? Oh god! Retreat! Damn it! Damn it! I was overcome. She's gonna go back to the original topic. Um... Why? Why are you telling me this, Mahiro? Yeah, what is your proof? That is true. Um... No... Um... No, wait. So you're saying that the killer used those night vision goggles? That the killer had these night vision goggles and not Piaquia. Well, I do have the proof. Well, I do have evidence against that, Miss Mahiru. I hope. I'm sure Piaquia brought the night vision goggles. I need to refute Mahiru's claim with evidence. But how? What the? Well, this is pretty interesting. Um. Uh. What the f? Oh. Okay. Yakuya was definitely the one who brought those night vision goggles. Definitely? But why? The Duralumin case, Miss Koizumi. The Duralumin case. Inside the Duralumin case, Yakuya had with him during the party. Duralumin? We found a smaller case for storing the night vision goggles. Which means we can assume that the night vision goggles were kept inside that Duralumin case as well. I said assume. Ibuki never uses such clever language. Eh. We'll go Ibuki. Plus, Yakuya was the only one who could have taken the night vision goggles out of the case. Mm-hmm. Because he had the key. Since he was carrying it around before the blackout in the first place. I see. When you put it like that, it makes sense. Then was that knife inside the case too? I would have to say yes. Either that or... Hmm. Okay, so we know that Byakuya used the night vision goggles. There's no way the killer used those. 
since he was inside the development case. But what about the knife, though? If there were night vision goggles inside, it wouldn't be weird for a knife to be in there, too. It would be weird. Huh? I am weird, aren't I? At times like this, I'd rather be fantasizing about tonight's main dish. <sighs> Ooh, you totally mean that in a perverted way. Yep. Even Gundam is preparing himself for wor for the worst. The knife was brought into in the dragon case along with the night vision goggles too. No, that's not possible. Well, clearly it wasn't. The knife was hidden in the dining hall before the party even started. I should be able to prove it. With tonight's main dish. Ah! I can't stop thinking about tonight's main dish. Hmm. Is that what we're focusing on? That's very interesting. Ah, another girl's pervert! Let's just kick them buff out! Well, whatever! Who cares about the freaking side dishes anyway? <laughs> God damn it, Hajime! Don't you start disappointing me here! Just like the other guy. Okay. Let's see. Um, the night vision goggles case. Uh, it was her. It was surely the duct tape. I see. There was duct tape left under the table where the body was found. Exactly. Huh? Duct tape. Yep. He probably hit the knife by duct taping it to the underside of the table. Oh, so that's why we found duct tape there. Though Byakuyo was thorough, even he couldn't have noticed a weapon taped to the underside of the table. This may be off topic, but why was Byakuya acting so paranoid? Uh. Not only did he bring a self-defense kit, but he had night vision goggles inside the case too. That's true. He went above and beyond being a little cautious. A little too cautious. I was about to say that Byakuya was being a little too overprotective, and I can understand that. Even though you never know when a blackout might happen, but there is a reason for that. Now that you mention it, that applies to the dangerous items he confiscated as well. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to be a little cautious, but performing a body check is a bit much. Uh, I won't say it's a bit much, but he probably hmm. knew someone was planning to commit a murder. Oh, <laughs> he probably knew. I don't know for sure. Are you saying he predicted the murder? Could it be? Was he also in possession of the all-seeing eye? Oh. <laughs> well, I, I would have to say it was the crystal ball. You think so too, right, Hajime? Mm, yep. That's right. Byakuya probably knew there was a possibility that a murder would occur. And I do have the perfect evidence for that. That will be the murder threat. I, can prove it with I guess we're gonna have to show this right now. Everyone, can you please take a look at this? Be careful. The first kill will happen tonight. Someone will definitely kill someone. Hey, the hell is this? It's a murder threat, Fuyuhiko. Somebody knew that someone might get killed tonight. Even after throwing a party. Hajime and I found this in Yakuya's cottage. It looks like a threatening letter someone sent for him. So, who's the someone? Nobody besides Monokuma would write such a dumb, threatening letter like that. Uh, I don't know about that one. Wasn't me! Are you sure? The only lies I tell are friendly lies! Those are much better than dirty lies! Those are still lies! <laughs> it doesn't matter who wrote it yet. So, Yakuya became paranoid because of this threatening letter? Yep. And because of that, we had a party! He probably decided to throw a party because of the letter. What do you mean? By gathering everyone in one place, he tried to create a situation where everyone could keep tabs on each other. Mm hmm. In doing so, he tried to put the writer of the letter in a situation where they couldn't act. But the letter might have been just a little prank. As long as he was determined not to let any of us die, he couldn't take that risk. 
strong sense of responsibility that made him believe the letter was legitimate. Oh, you should have told us he received a threatening letter. If he had, he would have panicked. Byakuya probably knew that too. So, he tried to do something about it without telling anyone? I see. A strong sense of responsibility as our leader was his undoing. Screw that noise! Who the hell wrote that letter? Well, obviously, the killer. Obviously, the killer? The killer. Is it really one of us? Who is it? I do have to wonder who is the killer? And was the killer really the one who wrote this? Like 100% was the killer who wrote the letter? Hmm. I guess we shall see about this in the next episode. Things are starting to get intense. Really, really intense.